Hey everyone, Joe here. Audacity is a fantastically useful program for recording all types of audio. It's fast, it's lightweight, and it's free, and it's very easy to use. I know there are a lot of you out there who use it for recording your vocals, maybe use it for recording demos, or perhaps playing over a backing track, or you might even use it for recording full songs. Today we're gonna to look at how we can mix using Audacity, specifically for mixing guitar. There are a lot of doors out there that are more focused on mixing. Audacity isn't really the first thing that comes to mind when mixing, but if that's what you've recorded in and that's what you've got and you just want to do a quick rough mix to make sure it sounds nice enough audacity can do that it's got a few functions a few plugins that do let you enhance the sound eqs uh, reverbs compressors and i'm going to show you how you can get a nice guitar sound so what we've got here today is an acoustic guitar and vocal track provided to me by my friend alan over at arc guitar he teaches how to play songs so we've got some vocal uh, instructions and some singing and some acoustic guitar. Let's have a quick listen to it first before we start mixing. And the chorus builds up a bit into a bit more of a strum. And is that alright, yeah? Give my gun away. So we've got a nice balance between the acoustic guitar and vocals. You can hear both very clearly. Um, but because they're both being recorded with the same mic, you have to kind of make compromises with the placement and everything and it means that it's a little bit woofy on the low end especially on the guitar so we're going to clean that up um, we're also going to clean up some of these peaks where especially on some of the harder strums it really uh, it really punches in and, and almost clips the audio so we're going to tighten that up a little bit we're just going to focus on this section here so we can highlight that and have a listen to any changes we make before making the changes across the board. And where you want to go is this effect tab. And in effect, you've got plugins. So you've got amplify, which will increase or decrease the level. You've got change pitch. Um, you've got fade ins and fade outs for the beginning and end of songs or videos. Uh, you've got uh, EQs and reverbs again to change the sound. But what we're going to start off with is an EQ. You've got two EQs on here. First, you've got the graphic EQ, which I don't find particularly useful at all. There's not enough control over it, and it's very hard to read. Um, you have to hover over to see which frequencies you're actually affecting. And we do want to know exactly what frequencies we're affecting, and we want to be focusing on, on some of the lows that are causing that woofy sound. So I'm going to go down and find the filter curve, as they call it here. So here we go. We've got an EQ. If, if, you, if you've EQ'd before, you, you'll know what you're looking at here. We've got the lower frequencies. This is where all the bass is. We've got the, all the top end up here. And then we can increase or decrease at certain points to accentuate or attenuate those certain frequencies. Now, that woofy sound we've got with the guitar is going to be around somewhere on the low mid around here. But the first thing we're going to do is completely cut off a lot of the low end that we just do not need. Now, this right here below... Below around 70, 80, it's almost inaudible. In fact, you probably won't even notice the difference. Um, but it just removes some of that low energy, some of that boominess and rumble that we just do not need. So let's just hear what this sounds like in comparison. And compared to without. So yeah, we're really not, not losing anything of value there. So we're going to cut that out uh, right up to around 80. You need to click twice to get two points, one for where it cuts and then one, one for it, where it reaches. Now, the next thing we want to do is find that particularly woofy sound. And I suspect it's going to be somewhere around maybe 200. So if we do a four clicks, four points, so that we can drag it up. You see that's increasing it, well, that's a bit too much, increasing at around 200 hertz by 18 dB. Now I'm increasing it just so I can hear uh, if we're getting the right frequency, because it will attend, it accentuate that horrible woofiness when we boost it. Yeah, it's around there, maybe a little bit, a little bit wider. Yeah, there it is. I think again, even even lower. Oh, we're getting a little bit of nasaliness up here. This whole low mid is a bit. Yeah. Okay. So if we say 150 
three 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 fifty, and we're going to drop that by. And let's just go for about five dB at first, and have a listen. Okay. Yeah, it sounds a lot smoother actually. Um, probably get away with keeping a little bit more of that in though. We don't want it completely brittle sounding. So let's try, let's try three dB. Yeah, so it's still got a little bit of warmth in there. I want to brighten it up a little bit as well, give it a little bit of crispiness to the top end of the guitar. So let's see what it sounds like around in the highs. High mid size around three to four K. Give my gun away. Maybe even a little bit more. Let's go a little bit harsher than we'd like, just to sit to, so you can have a good good idea of what it sounds like. Give my gun. Yeah, I mean it still sounds sounds good. Um and then obviously that's a little bit too too brittle and harsh so I'm going to dial it back let's say about 4 dB I'm going to go quite wide when you're doing boosts it's normally better to go a little bit wider um, to help it to sound smooth and then when you're doing cuts I, I normally stick to something more narrow just to get those specific frequencies tamed yeah maybe just go down to, to 3 Okay, and then I'm happy with that frequency curve, so I'm just going to go ahead and click OK, and it's affected the audio. Now, I don't just want to affect that, I want to affect the whole the whole thing where he's playing. So I'm going to undo that. Now if you highlight the whole lot with Control A or Command A if you're on Mac, we can just repeat that filter curve, and you'll actually find that when you go back into there, it's all saved. So we could just click OK again. You'll see that some of the levels have changed a little bit. This part in particular, the levels come down quite a lot. You can see on the waveform, it's a little bit smaller because that's where that woofiness was that we cut out mostly, whereas it hasn't affected the rest of the track quite as much. The next thing I want to do is get some compression on there, which is going to reduce the level of the audio once it hits a certain level. So when it gets really loud, it's going to turn it down slightly and not affect the quieter sections. So let's just highlight that section again where we need this compressor most and go to compressor in the effect tab. Now I do have a video, I'll link in the description below, just going over the main functions of a compressor and what they do. But just to give you a quick overview, I'll, I'll explain the most important ones now. You've got threshold. That's how loud the audio needs to be um, before it starts reducing it. You've got ratio. That's how much it reduces the audio by. The attack is how fast it reduces it once it hits that, that threshold. And then the release time is how long it takes to go back up to normal level to stop compressing once the audio has gone back below the threshold. So we're going to keep these two settings off for now. And we just need to find that sweet spot for the threshold where the audio is just hitting it on, on the loudest parts. With third party compressors that you can buy and add on to Audacity, it's going to show you a little bit more information. We don't have a huge amount of information here, but that's OK. We can use our ears. We need to reduce the threshold to a level where it's just about catching those peaks but not really turning down any of the quieter sound. So let's have a listen. Let's have a preview. That's without any compression because the threshold's right at the top. Let's bring it down. That smoothed it out. You don't get those harsh hits right in the ears, um, but I think it's compressing pretty much the whole thing. So we're going to bring it up a little bit more. Okay, yeah, again, it's a little bit harsh. Let's see what that looks like after applying that. Yeah, you see it's cut down those peaks, but we don't just want to do that. Let's go back into the compressor. So we're minus 13. The ratio, how much it's actually going to reduce it by, 
I think yeah, we can keep it around around three three point six to one. So that's uh, three point six decibels for every one decibel that goes over the threshold. But yeah, I think I think that sounded smooth enough. Um, very slow attack and release time on on this this plugin. We're going to reduce the release because we only want to be grabbing those peaks. Now one second is still long, but unfortunately that's that's the lowest this compressor can go. Um, and then the attack, we want that pretty fast as well. So it's grabbing those peaks. So we're going to bring that right down to a tenth of a second. And let's have a listen now. Maybe a slightly slower attack. We don't want to really crush it. There we go. So it's just tame those peaks. And then as we did before, select all with control A and I'm going to affect the whole audio. You can see there, um, it's dropped those, those claps as well. Now, as you can see, the level overall has gone down a little bit and we want to bring that up. Not too loud, but it should be, it should be hovering more around the minus 12, minus 10 dB area at least to get a solid, a solid level for the YouTube video this is going to go on. So what you can do, you can highlight the whole thing, go to normalize, and then it's going to bring up the level based on what we've got here as the peak amplitude. Um, so if you set this at zero, it's going to allow the audio to hit right at the top of, of the threshold, which we don't really want because it can cause some digital clipping. So we'll leave it at minus two and you'll see what happens. There we go. Just brought, brought it up to a healthier level. Now the one last thing we're going to look at to mix this acoustic guitar and vocal track is a little bit of reverb just to make it sound a bit more natural and a bit nice to listen to. This is especially useful if you're recording demos. Is that right, yeah. So let's go back to that bit there and go for reverb. Let's hear what it sounds like just at the default settings. Is that right, yeah. Okay, it's quite subtle. I'm going to bring it up just so you can hear exactly what it's doing. Is that right, yeah. It places the audio in a simulated room basically to give it that certain effect and make it sound more natural. Let's bring the room size down, the the, uh, the perceived size of that simulated room. And we don't want too much, we just want a little bit of subtle reverb on there. Let's have a listen. Is that right, yeah. Give my gun. I'm going to increase that room size. Uh, too small of a room with a lot of reverb on there kind of makes it sound a bit like it's in a bathroom, which is not ideal. Is that right, yeah? A little bit less. Is that right, yeah? But yeah, that sounds nice and natural. So let's apply that to the whole, the whole track. And again, that's brought the level down a little bit actually because it's adjusting the level of the original signal with the reverb signal. So I'm going to normalize that again. And there we have it. That's how you do a quick mix of your acoustic guitar in Audacity. So now that we've mixed our acoustic guitar, let's bring back in the original and hear what it sounds like before and after. So I'm happy with that. It sounds a little bit smoother, uh, a bit more natural. It doesn't have those high peaks or that woofiness that can be a little bit unpleasant to listen to. Now, of course, there are plenty of other pieces of software you can use to mix your music. Um, but again, Audacity is free. And if you just want to do a, a very quick demo, it does have a few functions that enable you to get a better quality sound. Please leave a comment below. Let me know how you mix your audio when you've recorded it into Audacity. And for any guitarists watching, if you want to learn a few new songs, it's definitely worth checking out Arc Guitar. That's A-R-K Guitar. I'll leave a link in the description below. And please feel free to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this coming out every single week. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.